Hi, it's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction, and I am back at the machine today, and I am still working on my spider web string blocks, and they end up looking like this. And um, to prepare for that, I need to make some, just some string pieces to uh, fill in this area over here and make those so they'll eventually go into blocks. I had a few questions about my last video that I did in the Sew with Joe, and I'm gonna to try to address some of those as I sew today. I really should be doing other things right now. I really shouldn't be at the machine, but I've had one of those days that my brain is kind of skitter scattering everywhere, and if I just take some time to sit down and sew, maybe for 45 minutes or so, I'm hoping my brain will kind of settle down and uh, allow me to get into doing some of the things I need to get done. I have a quilt loaded on the frame. It needs some attention. My sewing room has gotten torn apart again because I got a few new pieces in my organization plan. And if you've done any kind of cleaning or sorting, you know that sometimes the mess gets worse before it gets better and I had gotten it so it was all better and then after the few recent purchases I bought it all went worse again and that's okay it's just part of life but I'm really hoping I can get it back to the better side again so my room's in chaos um I have my my email is just beyond belief full of email that I need to pay attention to and that's in chaos. And I have a quilt on the frame that kind of has a deadline for someone else that I need to get done. Uh, you might remember if you're a blog reader, I had asked, well, it starts out this way. The ladies from Cresco, they had made a bunch of quilt tops and um, they had finished a bunch of quilts too. And I decided that rather than ship them out somewhere, I'd just try to find somewhere locally that they might be able to be used. So I contacted uh, one of the schools in the area and asked if they could use some quilts and they got back to me and said, yes, 22 quilts. Wow. So I kind of went into overdrive and ended up contacting the guild from that town and they offered to do some of the quilts and I offered to do some of the quilts. So I have a quilt here that was done by one of the ladies in the guild who's also a friend of mine and I need to get it done so that she can get it bound and out to the school kids. But in the meantime, I really think I'm gonna do better if I just sit down and have a little time at the machine because seriously, my brain is kind of blah, going everywhere right now. And uh, sewing just seems to settle my brain a little bit. So I was asked last time if I would try to do something so that you could see the sewing machine and see me a little bit better because last time my head was kind of chopped off right about here, which, you know, I didn't think was a big deal. But a couple of you asked, you know, can you do something different? So I'm trying something different and um, we'll see if this is any better. And if it's not, please let me know. I am super excited. I want to say thanks so much because so many of you uh, said, I love this. I love a sew with Joe. And you know what? I love it too. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of weird to be sewing and talking to a camera at the same time, but there's something kind of calming about it that I actually really like. And so thanks so much for all of you who gave me a thumbs up or subscribed or told a friend about uh, the Sew With Joe feature that I'm doing now. And it was popular enough that I think that it's going to be a regular feature. I don't know if I'll do it once a week, but certainly a couple times a month because it really was fun and I really had a good time uh, talking with you and sharing just some jibber jabber as I sew. Yeah, because I'm <laughs> the jibber jabber is going on in my mind anyway, so I might as well just jibber jabber it out to all of you. So back at the machine, I after I talked to you last, I've had another session of sewing. So I got a few more blocks done and I have a bunch that are in about this kind of limbo. You know, I've got a few more pieces that need to be put on them. So one of the questions I was asked was, if I don't have a corner uh, or a half square tri or a triangle to put on this corner, then what do I do? Because I had said to you that a lot of times I have uh, triangles left over from other projects and I, of course, I can't find one right now, but I'll just oftentimes just put a triangle right here on this corner. Well, instead of putting a tri triangle on the corner, a lot of times I'll have a piece like this 
that's uh, too, it's not long enough to be used as a string to go across the whole block. And a lot of times I do this instead, rather than put it this way, like you might on the corners, I turn it and I put it this lengthwise instead to make sure it'll cover the whole corner. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pop that on there and run it through the machine. And grab another and cut it off. I've had a couple busy days again. Um, not, Calissa was exposed to COVID again and had to have a test again. So then I had the boys again for a little while, just a day before we could find out that she um, doesn't have COVID again. At least we don't think she does. She had a rapid test. And from what I know, rapid tests aren't always quite as accurate, but hopefully this one was because um, she took the boys back and they're back at her house. This is just so crazy. Um, I maybe should tell you that I'm filming this. Uh, it is currently the end of November or heading towards the end of November, just a week or so before Thanksgiving of 2020. So if I'm referencing anything about COVID, um, it's because it's 2020 <laughs> and that's pretty much our life nowadays. Um, a couple other questions I had from people are, uh, one of the things I had said is that once I pick up a strip, I try to feed the whole strip through before I throw the strip back into the scrap bucket. And I'll be doing that again. Sometimes it doesn't work though. So I picked up this, which is very tealy and pink, and I'm gonna attach it to this block. And so that'll work because there's not, there's a spot I can put the color without it touching another color. And so this one again could use some teal in it. So I just pop it in. I also told you last time when we talked um, that that's my method of doing it. I take a long string, I run the string through the machine. Oops, this one has some strings to it. I'm gonna just clip those. Just some strings left over that are raveling from the fabric. So I take and I put the pieces right side together like this. Um, this is on top of what's previously been sewn. And then I run it through the machine. And after it's ran through the machine, then I take my scissors and I cut it off like that. And then the string is ready to go into the next piece. I keep using that same string piece as long as I'm able to. Sometimes I can't because the block is um, lined up differently or it's, for example, I only have this much left, so I can't use it on this block right now because it's not big enough. But I can use it on this block because it is big enough to cover the next area on this block. Okay, I'm at a spot I'm gonna stop and clip. I do most of my string piecing on this machine and um, I lovingly call this machine Julie. I got this machine at a thrift store. One day I had uh, my neighbor girl with me and she, I decided I was gonna stop at the thrift store and she was with and we went into the thrift store and um, while we were in there, I was walking around and I saw this machine and the machine had a chair with it. And on the machine, it said $15. And then on the chair, it said $15. So I didn't know 
if that meant $15 each or if that was $15 and they just put the price tag on there twice because some of the thrift stores in my area have done that before. They just put the price tag on twice um, in case one tag falls off, then they have another tag. Okay, now like I picked up this one and was thinking about putting it on here, but I already have this big piece of yellow. And although it's okay, I'm gonna put that piece back down because somebody said, why do you sometimes pick up a piece and put it back down? Well, that's the reason why. Um, is because sometimes I, as I'm pulling something out, I might see something better. And so I found this little piece right here. And I think that would go better with my block because so far my block doesn't have any blue in it. Okay, so back to my thrift store story. While I, when I was in there and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I know you love vintage machines, but do you really need another vintage machine? I didn't, but I ended up going up to the counter and I asked the gal who was working, I said, I see that it says $15 for your machine, but it also says $15 on the chair. So does that mean if I want both pieces, it's $30, or did you just tag that twice and so that the machine is only $15? And she said, well, I'm gonna go in the back and I'm gonna ask Julie. So she went in the back and Julie, who must be the store manager, came out and Julie says, um, oh, she goes, let me take a look. And she went over to the machine and she looked at the machine and um, she looked at me and she said, well, it's $15 if you take the machine and the chair. And I said, okay, I'll take the machine and the chair. And the machine was pretty, the cabinet was pretty scuffed up. And although I was super excited about it, I mean, who buys a sewing machine for $15? But at the time I didn't even know if it worked uh, and I knew that the case was kind of scratched up. So we loaded it up, I brought it home. My husband said, another machine? And I said, yes, another machine. And he said, well, that's fine. And I went and got some Restora Finish. It's a product that um, I buy off Amazon. I can put a link for it below. And I take the Restora Finish and you just wipe it over the surface and it covers up all the cracks or the chips or the scuffs that are in wood. And so I did that, I have a blog post about me doing that and I'll try to put that in the in the box below so there's a link for that too and you can see the difference how the machine went from oh it just just a scrappy a crappy looking machine into a really nice cabinet I had so much fun doing that but I was still pretty sure I was going to sell the machine and uh, but before I could sell it I needed to see if it ran or how it how it worked and so I plugged it in I was out in the garage pulled the seat up next to it and oh my goodness the machine just purred and it ran so nice and so I ended up um, falling in love with falling in love with the machine and the machine came upstairs to my sewing room okay I'm back I told you it's been a busy day and that was just proof that it has been I've had lots of um, interruptions I had the guy come and fix the my clothes dryer um, I've had Oh, back and forth correspondence email with um, a couple different people and it's been good. I've gotten a few things um, finalized, which has been awesome. But like I said, my brain's just been ping, 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 spatter, scatterbrained and um, thinking of all these things. So back at the machine, that's where I want to be. So I was telling you the story about my machine. Oops, I gotta get my iron cord right. Okay, and someone told me last time too, if I turn my head away and I, when I'm ironing, that you can't hear me very well. So I'm going to try not to do that as much. I really do listen to everyone's comments and I take the comments to heart and I, uh, I don't get super upset about what people tell me because I'm just trying this for the first time, second time, it's all new to me. And without your feedback, I can't improve. So I really do appreciate feedback. And um, it's really great when the feedback comes with, you did this right, but I might improve on that. That's my favorite kind of feedback. <laughs> um, I just, my, I, I, um, it's hard to take feedback that comes back, but you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, but I rarely get anything like that. You guys are really awesome and I appreciate that. But 
Uh, back to the story of my machine though. I ended up bringing the machine upstairs and um, this machine has just been awesome for me. I've sewn lots of quilts on it. I was really excited the first quilt I ever completed sewing on it because um, I don't know, I'm a history nut, I'm a vintage vibe. I just love um, sewing on something that my mom maybe would have sewed on. And I don't remember how old this one is, but um, she's a 1591. And if you're going to get any um, Singer machine, that's a vintage machine, I highly recommend this one. Um, people like really go for like 301s and of course people really go for featherweights, but this one is like the workhorse. And although I like my featherweight, it just doesn't zip like this one does. Okay, I'm just ironing these first pieces, the pieces back, like here where I had sewn together, I'm just ironing back again like this. I always press towards the piece that was most recently put on. Someone asked for a little bit of a video about um, how I end up trimming these up and then how I take the papers off and how I piece the blocks together. And I'll add that on to today's video. Towards the end, right now I just need some sewing time. Okay. Now I think we're ready to go again. <clears throat> oh, I've got a little ticklish cough. Um, it's just one of those ones that you get a dry spot in your throat. No, I don't have COVID. I'm perfectly fine. I feel like every time anyone coughs nowadays, everybody's like, oh, do they have COVID? <laughs> but no, I really, I've been home, so I can't, I really haven't been exposed to anybody except my grandson. And my son, Carl, who lives at home here with me. Okay, now here we're back to that question about why I put some pieces down and why, why I don't keep using some of the pieces. I just put this pink piece down onto here. Uh, but I'm coming up, and this is the next place I'd be putting it. Well, pink and pink, I don't want to do pink and pink. So I'm going to just grab a different block. And I'm just going to start a new block because the pink is in my hand. So I end up calling this machine Julie and I call her Julie because she's named after the lady at the thrift store that told me that it was only going to cost $15 to get both the chair and the machine with the cabinet. my scissors. String blocks are really messy. Um, I kind of laugh and say when I'm sewing them, I feel like a bomb exploded in my work area. Okay. Proof my day has been crazy. That was just a phone call from Kelly. Um, I'm super excited to get it though. She, uh, Kelly is my oldest daughter and she uh, and her husband had had some fertility issues and they ended up uh, being able to have Georgia and they decided that being they had fertility issues before, they were afraid they might have fertility issues again. So they decided to um, not wait especially long and try to have another baby more so because they were expecting fertility issues. So she was right. They did have a few fertility issues and they ended up going on to uh, a specialist. And after one visit with a specialist, everything worked. And, well, I guess the second visit with the specialist, 
everything worked and she ended up pregnant sooner than she anticipated and she also ended up pregnant with twins so we have twins coming to our family in may um, i think her due date's like uh towards the 20th or so of may but we're guessing that uh, they won't let her go that long and we'll probably have babies at the beginning of may and so we're super excited about that that's our hope anyway is that we can make it to the beginning of may it's always uh, a challenge when you have more than one so um we're really hoping that things go well so after she found out that she was expecting uh, the doctors had talked to her and said that um, she should probably continue on with some uh, treatment um, at the with the specialist to make sure everything was going okay and then after that they might possibly turn her over to uh, a local doctor but then after the first ultrasound when the babies were like as big as a pea they did an ultrasound then and um i believe it's baby b because they call them baby a and baby b i believe baby b had kind of like a lump or a disfigurement at its umbilical cord and so they said that that could be nothing or it could be something and so she's had to go back and forth to appointments and get ultrasounds done every like three weeks or so to try to find out uh, what's happening with this baby and to see if whatever they thought they saw on this pea-sized little baby is actually a deformity or a disability or something wrong or if it was just going to work its way out. And so from everything we learned today, everything's good. And so I'm super excited about that. Just super excited about that. I've not had much experience with twins myself. Um, I have a nephew who had twins and I have a niece who had triplets, but um, no experience myself with twins. So this is gonna be an interesting thing. That will be grandchild number eight and nine for our family. And we're just super excited. And um, it's especially sweet when we know that Kelly and Jason have uh, a few, can have fertility issues. I think uh, many of you likely have uh, children with fertility issues and you can relate. But I think I was back at my machine when I was when I last left and the phone rang. See? And you wonder why I'm being scatterbrained? <laughs> this is exactly why. Because this is the way my whole day is gone. So um, back to my machine. Uh, I sew most of my projects that take a lot of room at this machine. I string blocks I sew here all the time. Um, that's probably the main thing I said. I, I can't talk. The main thing I sew here, but I sew a lot of string blocks. I just love string block quilts, so um, I end up sewing a lot. I, I proof that I love string block quilts is that um, I took Bonnie Hunter's book um, String Fling and. I've never done this before, but I made every single quilt in her book. And that was, I was so excited about that when I, when I accomplished that. Okay, now here another time I was thinking about switching up fabrics because I have this much of this, but this piece just needs a small, this block just needs a small piece. So rather than use up this, that's a larger piece, I thought that I maybe could see if I had a smaller piece that could fit. And so I'm checking that out here. Hmm. Nothing's really looking like it'll work or is the right color. Oh, wait. We're going to put this orange one on this side. I don't do the best job at it, but I try not to dilly-dally too long on trying to pick a piece to sew down. Because in the end, I don't think anybody's really going to notice a big difference in the... 
in the quilt if I put a orange piece next or a green piece next. Okay, now I'm getting down to where I've got, I'm getting to where I can start to put corners on here. And so I don't have a, tri wait, I do have a triangle. So this time I'm gonna put this triangle in the corner. Yep, here I am kind of digging again, trying to find something good. I don't have many pieces that really are good for corners right now, so I'm gonna probably have to use some other things. Uh, another thing I'd like to tell you too is, it's okay if you use a wider piece at the corners because when you use a wider piece, well, what happens is when we're done with these, you see the backside here where the newspaper is? We're gonna trim this up. And when we trim it up, um, this is where the fabric ends from this piece right here and there's only this much of it left. So a lot of this is actually gonna get lost in the seam. So it's nice if we can not have too many seams right down there, otherwise the quilt just ends up with a lot of seams and it's hard to get that to flatten all out. Because that's one of the questions I had is, how do you get those intersecting seams to flatten when you have all those seams in the block? Well, the truth of the matter is you really don't there's not really a good way when you're making string blocks to get the intersection of the seams once you're piecing the pieces together to make the block. It, there's really no good way to get that seam flat. And for people who are like purist sewers that want all of the seams going in the right direction and everything to lay super, super flat, um, string blocks probably aren't aren't probably the best thing for you because it's that's something that's really hard to achieve with string boxes to get all of your seams um, really flat. But it still makes beautiful quilts and I still, I honestly, string, string quilts are my favorite quilts. I think I told you last time that when I make a string quilt, I kind of feel like I, made something from nothing. I definitely feel that way. And and I like I like that feeling. Okay, these all need bigger pieces in the corner. And I did kind of dig around and find a couple bigger pieces. So I'm gonna put this big piece right over here on this corner. And by using that bigger piece there, that means the seam is gonna back up further away from where that intersection is gonna be close to. I think this last one's gonna be a finished block. Or a finished piece. A lot of people like to just work with two or so at a time. And I am not a methodical quilter. I just, Kelly always laughs at me because I, well, look, I did the, I ran this many through the machine before I clipped. And probably this next time I might only run three through the machine before I clip. Kelly is very methodical. She would probably go through and take every one of these pieces over here that I have that need to be finished. And she'd probably put one piece on this one side of the kite and then she would clip them all apart. Then she would iron all of them. And then she would put them back into the machine and feed every single one through methodically putting a piece on the other side of those blocks. That's just the way she is and this is just the way I am. Um, I'd be curious if you leave a comment to let me know how you are. Are you kind of like me and do things kind of scatterbrained and um, just run them through haphazardly? Or are you like Kelly and are a little bit more methodical and like to keep a specific pace on how you put um, 
how you sew your pieces together. Okay, so, so now here's another time. I picked up this piece. I don't really wanna put it back down, but it's really kind of big for this. I could sew it on there, but I also know I've got some blocks like back here that this maybe would work better on. And so I'm just gonna grab one of them and sew it down. Oops, this one didn't get ironed. Oh, it's gonna go on this side. Okay, this will fit here. I think one of the reasons why I like string blocks is, is it's, I don't know, they're kind of a little more artsy. Uh, just because, you know, you're picking and choosing and I like them because you can kind of sit down and just start sewing. I actually love it for that reason. I should iron a few more of these. Oh, nope, I can't use yellow. Okay, over to the big bucket and see what we have in the big bucket. Okay, I have a piece like this and this is actually pretty wide. And so if I, if I want, I could take this and I could cut it down into pieces that would work good for corners. I could just cut it in half like this and that's what I'm gonna do. I'll end up using these pieces for the last pieces to go on because they're deep this way and then that way that'll keep the seam away from that very tippy corner like I talked to you about before. Okay. Oh, let's see who's this. I just recently did a quilt and used this as the backing fabric. And so I'm gonna throw this into a couple of my blocks, I think. Might as well use that scrap up right away. Don't let them linger. I'm kind of getting towards the end to several of these blocks. I think the next piece I put on will be the, after this one, will be the last piece I put on. Okay, here we came to one that I think, if we take one of the purple ones that I just cut and set aside from, from before, I think I can pop that on the end and that'll be enough to finish off that block. Okay, one that needs to be ironed. Okay, let's see here what we have. This is my little pile down here of pieces that can go on the corner. And so I have one, just gonna use this square on the corner. I don't have many half square triangles. this time around. It just matters what I dig into the box and find as to what I use. Um, okay, I'm putting this blue piece down here because we're to the corner again. And technically I could put it way out here, but if I do that like that, then that seam is gonna get all jammed up in that corner again. So I'm gonna just move it back and I'm just gonna sew my seam back here and um, It'll still cover the corner, and then that'll keep that extra seam a little way away from where the actual intersection is going to be. Got a couple more to iron. Okay. Ooh, here we are. We're almost to the end of this one. Yahoo! A quilt I made not so long ago here at the machine, at this machine. As I said, I kind of like to make the quilts that end up into with a string bucket. I like to make them over on this machine. And um, the one of the last quilts I made was uh, Bonnie Hunter's Crooked Courthouse Steps. And that was a really fun quilt to make. And I loved making it with strings. Strings are just my favorite. 
Okay, this is a really narrow strip and some people ask, well, you know, why do you use those? I think it really adds interest to the quilts. And I think um, if, all the, if all the strings are the exact same size, I think that's just a little more a little boring just like if all the people in the world were the exact same that would be a little boring so i like to add these little narrow strings in there um they're i'll be honest they're kind of a waste of time because they really don't cover much of the surface because they're so narrow and you lose a quarter of inch of the seam in the first seam and then you you lose another quarter inch of the strip in the second seam so it really does kind of um, seem silly to use pieces that are that thin, but I just like the look of it. I think it just makes it more interesting. Okay, we got another pile done here, guys. Or we got this pile ran through the machine. I guess they're not done. Ah, this one's gonna be done. Yahoo! Okay. So we have our first one done of the day. I'm gonna just pop that over here and I'm gonna sew a little more, see if we can get a couple more done. Here, I'll sew one of these with that narrow strip and put another piece on it so you can see how good it looks when it's, um, when you get a narrow piece in there like that. Oh, this one could benefit from one of those purple pieces. But I don't have any more purple pieces. What do I have here? Is there something wide in here? Oh, yes. Check out this little race car fabric. We'll pop that one in there. Um, if you're a blog reader of mine, maybe you're somebody who sent this piece to me. Because I know for sure I never bought that piece of fabric because I don't buy very many novelty prints. I probably should, but I don't. Oh, we're having a little traffic jam here. Poo. And this is something that happens too. When you work with strings, there was a string on the fabric and it caught in the um, foot of the machine. Okay. There. Uh, well, let's see if I can find where did the piece go that had the, oh, here it is. Okay, I think a black looks more interesting when, here, this is this piece is a, like a medium width, this is a narrow width, and then we have one that's a wider width. I think it just makes the black look more interesting when the, shade, the strips are a little bit different sized. And so I like to try to shake that up a little bit and make them a little bit different size. Okay, this is a little bit long. I'm just going to clip that. Yahoo, I'm going to clip this one off because I'm so excited because it looks like we have block number two of the day done. Okay, here's that little race car piece I just added on there to complete that block. So we'll put that one in the done pile too. I'll probably do a couple more and then I'll um, save the rest of our time together to show you how I trim the blocks up in the back and then um, how I rip the papers off. Uh, I'll have to wait till Carver's here because Carver would be really sad if Grandma ripped the papers off without him because that is truly one of his favorite things to do. Um, if you have grandkids or children, um, it's a great thing to rip papers off the backs of string blocks. Can you believe I'm back at the machine again? Yes, another interruption. This is honestly my life and people always ask, how do you get so much stuff done? And to be perfectly honest, I don't really know why <laughs> or how, because I do get just tons and tons of interruptions. So just in this short bit I was trying to sew with you, I've had three interruptions, um, all three from my kids. And that's okay, I love my kids, but holy mackerel. <laughs> so, 
And then something else, um, I s ran a couple pieces through the machine while um, I was on the phone call to my daughter and I ran out of thread. So I rethreaded the machine and <laughs> started sewing again and it kept nodding up and I couldn't figure out why. Well, on vintage machines, you, of you often have to thread the needle differently. So on a 1591, you have to thread from, from the inside down here and pull your thread this way out. And so I'm used to sewing on my other machine. So I went and took the thread and I put it from this direction in. Well, of course my machine wouldn't work, but it took me about three or four times of threading and unthreading before I finally figured that out. So anyway, I just popped back on here to tell you that I need to get something else done today. So I can't just sew and do my little peaceful sewing time that I was hoping to do for a little bit longer. Um, I'm gonna end up going downstairs and probably filming more of this video. I'll show you how to cut the blocks and I'll show you how to cut papers, but hmm, maybe I should do one of those other things that's on my list too. Yeah, my brain's still running. So maybe I need 10 more minutes at the machine. Regardless, either way, I'll catch you later down at the um, island and I'll show you how to cut the blocks. Bye for now. Hi, I'm at the cutting table now. I'm down in my kitchen. I really like to cut things out at my kitchen uh, island. And I have some little helpers with me today. Here's Gannon and he's eating a freeze pop. And here Carver is. He wants to eat a bomb pop, but he's patiently waiting until we can shoot this before he eats his bomb pop. Carver, can you show him what you have there? Look at it. Tell him, it's a spider web string block. Can you say that? It's a spider web string block. Good job, good job. Well, I'm gonna show you how to cut them. So you can see that they're all raggedy edges and they're not following the, the, pad, the line of the quilt. So I just take them here. Carver, watch. I gotta put this right on the line of the paper yeah. that was there before. And then I gotta take my cutter that you can't cut. And then I have to go like this and slice it off. And look it, there's a piece for you to quilt with. Yay! Yay, okay. Now I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna lay it down again right along that line. And I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm gonna slice it. And then I'm gonna turn it again. Yeah, this is a good time if you have one of those uh, rotating cutting mats to use that. But the boys are here and I just quick grab this. So, And like that. And just like that, you have your block all trimmed up and ready to go. And then you can pass them off to this great little guy right here. And he loves to pull these off, don't you, Carver? You want to show him how to do that? Yeah. Be the here, teacher. Do this one. You, sh you do this one, though, because this, is, this one's not trimmed yet. Could you do this one and show them how you take the papers off? Yep, just like that. Carver is really good at this. He has helped me do so many string blocks. I think he started helping me when he was probably about Gannon's age. He first started helping me take the strings off the back of my blocks. And so it looks like I've got lots of help here today. I've got Gannon and Carver and we're gonna trim up the rest of our blocks and rip up some more papers. And I hope that gives you a better idea on how to complete a spider web string block. I'll probably sneak back some other time and show you how to actually sew the blocks together. So thanks for watching. Bye. Carver, say bye, ladies. Bye.